Good morning. We're here at day two of the 47th annual session for the American College of Prosthodontists here in San Francisco. I've got the great pleasure of being here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Mark Ledlow. Dr. Ledlow is the Division Director of Implant Prosthodontics at the Medical University of South Carolina. Mark, you've been really involved with a lot of aspects of digital dentistry over your career. Uh, your short career, I might add. My short but, career. <laughs> but I, I'm hoping that you can share with us over the course of the next 10 or 15 minutes a little bit of the activities that you've been involved with with respect to the development of the digital curriculum for digital dentistry for the universities. Sure. Uh, as well as maybe some of the experience that you've been able to uh, embrace not only in the, with the faculty, with the adjunct professorship, but also uh, with the students that you touch on a daily basis, both in your own facility, but also at the Rutgers University where you work as a mentor uh, with this pilot program that's currently running. So yeah, I'd love maybe, to. maybe I can just uh, have you tell our audience, our watchers, just a little bit about uh, your background and, and how you got involved with the ACP EF and the digital curriculum. Yeah, so, so the way I, I, I got into digital dentistry is when I got out of dental school about 12 or 13 years ago, that was one of the focuses that I really wanted to get into was digital dentistry. And I, I, two months out of school, I bought my first machine, you know, spent all the money and was really excited about it. And ever since that day, it's just been a passion of mine. And so when the ACPEF, when all this came about, um, I was one of the first people that was on, on the task force to help to try to develop this, because this is an area that I spend all day, every day in. I love it, I'm passionate about it. I stay up nights thinking about <laughs> digital dentistry, as nerdy as that sounds. And uh, that's kind of how, how I got involved with it, is just because these are the type of things that we try to apply every day with our students and faculty and residents. And it's really trying to make it practical so, so all those groups can get better and our patients can get better care. So that's kind of where I right. came from and how I am involved We, we in first now. met a little over two years ago, I believe. We were at a meeting in Chicago. It was an educator's conference right. to some, some extent. And at that point in time, you were just in the room. And now you've evolved. What is your role currently within the scope of the digital curriculum uh, task force team? So when it, was, when it first came about, my initial role was I was head of integration, okay. which I mean, that's like the task. task of the century because it's how do we get all, all the stuff into schools and people using it. And it, that, that was, and still is, I think, going to be our most difficult right. challenge. And so I was initially tasked with that. Um, we came up with some of the groundwork relative to the white paper. Dr. Lynn and Cooper and I you know, compiled and wrote the white paper and the communications plan and a bunch of different things to help schools kind of get their foot in the door with digital and, and present it to their deans and people that may be a little skeptical with digital dentistry and be able to give them a background and a basis to why to do these things. Right. And currently what I'm doing is I'm still in with the integration committee, but right now I act as a mentor for, for the Rutgers University. And that, that's just been a pleasure because we can help take the school from you know, a baseline of not having a lot of digital dentistry and get them all the way you know, to wherever right. they want to go according to what their vision and focus is at, at the university. So, uh, you know, outside of your school, you're working with Rutgers as a mentor. Um, they're one of the five pilot schools right. uh, that were selected for this project. What, what are some of the early challenges? I mean, this the pilot just commenced uh, two months ago, two right. and a half months ago. So what are some of the early challenges that you've been able to to see and help the team at Rutgers work through? So a, cu a couple of the, probably the two biggest challenges, and again, this is ubiquitous okay. in all institutions, is the first is, it's just faculty acceptance. I mean, you know, these machines have been out for a long time, but that doesn't mean people have used them or had experience with right. them before. So it's just like any tool or anything which you have, when you first get it, you know, there, there's a little bit of, of trepidation, if you will. Okay. And so that's been one of the things which we've been able to overcome, and, and a lot of it has just been, it's, it's a lack of, of what the current knowledge is relative to these things, because a lot of us have paradigms and thoughts of digital dentistry that are from you know, 10, 15 right. years ago, and, and that's evolved. what we still think of, of yes. digital dentistry. But, it, I mean, from when I first got into it to now, it's not even in the same ballpark as let's, to what it was. Let's dive into that a little bit deeper. So you, yeah. you got your first system 12 or 13 years ago. Comparatively, back back then to where you are today with the solutions that you use, and you have various solutions right. uh, from different manufacturers, so you know, you're very much an adopter. Tell, tell the audience a little bit, you know, maybe some people listening here aren't really that familiar with what digital dentistry is uh, from a patient perspective, but also from a clinician standpoint. Yeah, so when I first got into it, there was only one brand out there, and again, it was the, it was the Cerac, yes. and it was the Red Cam. And I mean, that, that type of, of system, what we used to do is have the patient open up, we would spray, you know, this powder all over the mouth, you okay. know, get all over the operatory. 
go in there and you could take one, maybe three pictures of the area. And then we had to design, you know, the milling took about half an hour. We didn't even have furnaces back then to fire. We just polished everything and put it in the mouth. Whereas now, you know, our students and our residents, you know, they're scanning full arches, you know, from a diagnostic perspective or, or even from a restorative perspective in, you know, two to three minutes of time. And, and we've got students that, with some of the newer scanners, they pick it up for the first time and can go right into the patient's wow. mouth and scan just immediately. But there's so many different solutions out there, it just makes it, it makes your practice a lot more fun and it makes the, the excitement which it breeds is, is truthfully just incredible. And not only for your team, your staff, you know, that you're working with daily, but also the patient. I mean, the patient experience is, you know, there's no goop in the mouth. Oh, the, man. The impression material gag, if you will. I but, mean, the uh, problem that we have now is, you know, as we put the scanner in, they're going like this and trying to watch us while right. we're doing because they think it's so fascinating. But, it, you know, in my private practice, it was a big patient builder, yes. you know, and a big practice builder because it was doing things differently than everyone else had done it. And it, the school, you know, the kids just feed off it and they love it and they're, they're so excited to do it and that bleeds into the patients that the patients get right. excited and passionate about it too. You've also got the benefit of the large screen, the images on the, on, the, on the wall, if you will. It's no longer, you know, you're no longer looking at a piece of impression material. You're and, actually seeing the image on a 42 inch monitor. And that was, very that was brutal at the beginning because I thought I used to know how to prep teeth until I blew it up 20X and I, you know, and it looked like ah. a gerbil had bitten my margins all I'm over sure everywhere. I'm sure the preps were very good. Well, what, what it does is, is that exact thing. It makes you a better clinician and a better person to be able to diagnose these things because we're able to see things in a very different way and, and do that exact thing where we're able to blow it up and look at nuances and really train our students better so that we get a better result for our patients. So that's why we're just absolutely let's, excited. Let's go back it. a little bit. So we're, we're two and a half months into the pilot. Um, yeah. How long does the pilot run for and can you share with us just exactly what, you know, some of the outcomes that you're looking for over the next, say, two, the remainder of 2017 sure. through 18? So the beauty about the pilot program and, and this endeavor overall is the fact that it, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing. Each institution can see those things which they want to try to apply and which their school is lacking and kind of put it together. So the way that it, that Rutgers decided to do things is they decided to build the foundation first and so they're starting from a preclinical side they you know over the past couple months they were able to to procure I think it was you know around 12 intraoral scanners wow, okay um, and really outfit their preclinical not only curriculum that we gave them you know we have a lot of plug and play things so we gave yes. them curriculum we gave them competency maps we gave them all all those tools which they needed but they're able to plug that into their curriculum, you know, on, on year number one in dental anatomy and in their first fixed cross okay. courses so that the students can get a very good baseline. And so that's where they're doing it. And what they're trying to do is as that group continues over the next couple of years, when they get into clinic, that's when they're really gonna start applying it clinically. To be truly honest, I bet once they see, as they've started to do this, I think they're gonna apply it a lot earlier once they realize how well right. it's starting to work for their for their students. So, what, what type of impact? Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the, the people that are involved with it. Not only the students, but the faculty as well as you know the the adjunct professors. There's a lot of training that has to happen there from is. a teaching standpoint. But maybe let's try, let's start there with the professors and the and the teaching. Yeah. Uh, so, colleagues. so the way that the professors work is. I mean, a prime example is is one one guy from our institution. He's an adjunct. He's been, you know he's in with us about two days a week. Had nothing digital before coming here. He sees the excitement of all of us using it, and, and I mean he's 72 years old. Yes. And he comes in at like you know really early in the morning to play with these things to learn them. Yeah. And that's what we've seen with the faculty. And again, that's what we we're seeing is is the excitement that goes through the faculty once they do get to that baseline because that's the hardest hardest thing with all of this is when you get a new piece of equipment, that's the first time that you have faculty and student on a very similar level right. before, and it's uncomfortable at the beginning. But once they learn the system and, and help get some almost reverse mentorship from the students and residents, yep. they're, they, j they just blossom and get excited about, about the technology. So that, that's been one of so, the great so things. It, it works both ways. The, oh, it does. The, and I know students are looking for schools that are digital, right? They, they you know, the, the top students can basically select the school they want to go to right. some extent. Um, they're looking for the digital environment. I mean, that's what they, they want to be in and that's what they're used to, obviously. But what are some of the, 
the interesting nuances perhaps that you've watched or, or witnessed with the students specifically? So the biggest thing with the students is just the sheer excitement that comes from using this stuff. Um, you know, one of the things that we introduced about, you know, a couple years ago is really getting our students involved in the implant planning portion, right. you know. And, and with that, that along with the digital diagnostics, we do a lot of digital wax, wax sure. ups and, and different things of like that. And I mean, these kids just, I mean, they're eating it up. I mean, they're constantly in, 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 our, in our sim labs, in our design room, spending all of their yeah. time doing this just because they're very excited at the ability to do these things in a different way and in a very precise, it, 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 and there's that instant gratification just because now you've got it on a screen, you've seen right. what you've got, and, and they absolutely just love it. So, and, and truthfully, they're, they take the challenges a lot better than us older folks do <laughs> because, you know, they just look at it as part of a learning right. curve and not a roadblock. So yeah, they just, you know, point. if they run into issues, you know, they just sit there and mess around for a while, and lo and behold, they figure you know, it out. Over the, some of the program yesterday, there was some mention of, you know, the volunteer hours and the time that you and your task force team members are putting into this. I mean, I know it's rewarding, but, you know, what drives you in this space to commit so much extra time outside of your family, your personal life, your, your career path, etc.? Well, I think the biggest thing relative to that is just, you know, you get bitten by the bug. I know, I, I know what what we can do with this stuff. I know where we can go as an industry and where we can go as a profession. And that's what excites me, is truthfully just the ability to help our whole profession yes. progress forward. Because, you know, I do think there's a big need, especially in prosthodontics, to, to move into a, you know, into the 20th century, into the future. And that's what gets me excited and makes me spend you know, sleep's overrated <laughs> these days, but, you know, spend a lot of time working on these things just yeah. because it excites me. You know, from you, from your perspective, why as a company do you well, want to do good, these that's things? That's a good question. I'm not sure that we have enough time for that question, but I will tell you, we are, uh, Henry Schein and our partners, I mean, there's partners involved with us, it's Bio Horizons, it's, it's Glidewell, Plan Mecca, as well as 3Shape. Uh, we're, we're, very, we're very grateful for the commitment that you and your team have put forth to really drive the adoption of digital dentistry. We believe that you know, we want to help our clients focus on their, on their practice care so that they can really focus on their patient care. Right. And we believe that digital dentistry is not only a, a great way for a practice builder, but it's really better dentistry and the patient experience is hands yeah. down significantly better than an analog technique, if you will, not only for diagnostics, but also treatment care. So, right. uh, we just we're grateful to be involved. Quite frankly, we think the ACP and the ACPF is the right foundation. The whole American College of Prosthodontists really can drive uh, change in the curriculum adoption. We believe, and we've uh, we've been so pleased with the progress to date with this project. Well, I think you kind of hit it on the head there. The biggest thing is it changed perceptions with patients. Yeah. Because perceptions of patients with dentistry is generally pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, that's right. You know, we've seen the shows. It hurts. All the yeah. stuff is all goopy in there. But I think we could change some of those paradigms by using these tools and technology. So I think you're right on the money. Well, thank you for all that you do. I no know problem. that it's a lot it's of work pleasure. and a lot of engagement on your part. Uh, you definitely are truly a, 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 a real pioneer, I would say, in this space. And you're definitely an up-and-comer in this, in this arena. So thank you very much well, for you. all that you thank do. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining it. us today. And we're signing off here this morning at the American College of Prosthodontists 47th Annual Session here in San Francisco. Have a great day.